Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be going over a new rifle and a new cartridge to me and to the channel. Uh, relatively new in general, but by the time this video gets out, it probably won't be that new anymore. But um, quick disclaimer for YouTube's sake, this is a bolt action rifle, five round magazine on a private range on private property. There's no bystanders. Uh, everything's completely safe and it's just me out here. So anyway, moving on. Um, the specs on the rifle and the components will be in the description for those of you that like to geek out over that stuff like me. Um, so if you want to see those details, please refer to the description for more detailed information on such. The rifle itself is a custom rifle. It is a Terminus Kratos Action, an MDT HNT 26 chassis. It's got an MDT 3 port brake on the front, uh, worn mountain rings, and an Athlon Ares scope with a MDT Skypod on the front. Now, this scope isn't going to stay on this gun. I had to pull it off of another rifle because I actually don't have a scope for the gun yet. But everything else is pretty well complete. Um, MDT magazine, I think that's pretty well everything. So, uh, as far as the rifle goes, obviously it's um, pretty expensive stuff. So, I'm, I'm hoping it'll shoot well. Just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's going to be a tech driver. But it should lean in that direction, right? So, um, Anyway, uh, the gun, it's a proof research carbon fiber barrel. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's kind of important. So the chambering that we're going to be playing with today is the seven millimeter PRC. So this cartridge is completely new to me. This is the first gun I've ever shot, let alone owned um, in this cartridge. We are starting off with hand loads. I shot one round on paper just to figure out where, to sight it in basically, which I just bore sighted it here looking through the barrel doing the old trick. I'm, I'll make a video on that one of these days if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it works really good, by the way. But anyway, we're not quite at 100 yards. We're at like 85 yards. Um, but we're not really shooting for groups today. So I am so new to this cartridge and so is most of the world at this point to where I'm just simply doing pressure testing, meaning I am going to be working up um, from supposed min and max or like in that range from um, a few different powders with one bullet. So we're gonna be shooting, it's Peterson Brass with Federal Gold Medal Match Large Rifle Magnum Primers. Um, the powders are gonna vary, but the bullet's gonna remain the same. The bullet is the Burger 195 grain EOL. Um, it's their hunting bullet, but it's a really, really heavy for caliber hunting bullet. I'm really curious to see how it shoots. It's about 50 thousandths off of jam in the lands. So it should give us plenty of room as far as safety goes from not jamming the bullets into the lands. All I've done was run a patch down the barrel with some oil on it just to make sure there wasn't any debris or anything in the barrel before shooting it. Put one round on paper with the lightest charge of Ramshot Grand, which was 64 grains, and that produced a muzzle velocity of about 2671. I'm kind of discounting that because um, there was oil in the barrel. It was kind of freshly clean, so to speak. I'm not breaking the barrel in. I don't care if you like it or not, I'm not doing it. Um, the point, not that your opinion doesn't matter, but the fact of the matter is it's already not gonna happen. So it doesn't, you can't change my mind at this point. But um, the first charge was 64 grains. We're gonna be working up in one grain increments to 70 grains. Um, like I said, these are supposed min and max sort of charges uh, at this moment in time per the um, building of this rifle. Now that I got all that geeky crap out of the way and you guys actually probably want to see the gun shoot, I just want to make it very clear we're not shooting groups because none of these are going to be the same load. Every single one of these is different. The only thing that's going to remain the same is the bullet, but the powder is going to change on every single shot. So we're going to be using Grand, Ramshot Grand, Hodgen Rotumbo, Hodgen H1000, and Vitivori N570. Um, I'll post all the charge weights and everything in the description. I just I need to start shooting or half of you guys are going to leave the video. So. Um, the next shot that we're going to be doing is 65 grains of Ramshot Grand, and we're just going to keep working up in one grain increments all the way up to 70. So we're going to go ahead and put this sucker on paper. Hope to God it doesn't kill our GoPro per usual. And then we're going to just go through this um, powder column and hope they shoot okay. Now, a lot of you guys are going to laugh at me. My um, my stock is like really short. I should have put spacers in it, but I, I forgot. So anyway, it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's we'll still get velocity, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so first two shots were actually pretty close together. That's encouraging, um, especially on a fresh barrel. That was 2716 or 2717. Now we're at 66 grains. I'll tell you what, for 
having completely different loads across the board already. They're uh, they're grouping. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, next is 67 grains, and that velocity was 27.55. Twenty-eight thirty-two. I think it's pretty safe to say that we can expect this gun to shoot decent. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm getting a little excited because I've had a lot of bad luck lately with shooting, so I, I just want some stuff to go smooth. The last velocity was twenty-eight thirty-two. The next charge weight that we're going to be doing is one, two, three, four, five, sixty-eight grains. Okay, so we're already running into pressure. Um, I don't think I really want to go past this point because we already got a mark on the ejector, or a mark from the ejector, rather. Um, conventional wisdom says to stop. Might shoot it anyway because I'm not. Uh, I'm not always good at following directions. The primer is actually not even flat, but there's definitely a. A noticeable ejection mark so that velocity was 2870 um, this rifle was supposed to max out theoretically at about 2900 with this powder so we're getting pretty close to that already and on a brand new barrel typically they speed up that doesn't always happen but uh, a lot of times they do so I think I'll shoot one more I'll probably let it cool off for a minute and then I'm gonna shoot one more and just see if it's a if it's a heavy bolt lift and if it is we're just gonna be done with these and I'll pull the last one 69 grains is the last one that one actually didn't feel bad um it still is getting that uh, that print on the bolt face so I still wouldn't recommend going past this point um, if it was somebody else shooting the rifle but for the sake of testing, again, don't do what I'm doing. Always look at the disclaimer in the description, please. But uh, that was 69 grains and it produced about 2937 feet per second, which is pretty dang fast with a 195 grain bullet. I am going to let it cool off a little more and I'm gonna shoot this last one for the sake of science. Not that you guys would suggest that, but uh, we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna move on to the next, uh, next powder. We're gonna let the gun really cool off for that next one. Twenty nine seventy five. Okay, so again, I know I'm talking a lot in this video. I apologize for the, the constant chatter, but um, as far as um, safety goes, I would not suggest shooting those last three rounds. So we topped off at 2975 but realistically i think 2850 was kind of where we were sitting at on a, on a max for this gun because it definitely was showing signs of pressure um heavy bolt lift ejector prints on the brass the primers don't actually look that bad but uh the case heads do they're showing a pretty stiff print from that bolt so um again we're we're testing okay so this is not something that i'm gonna do more than once once I know where this powder is like, okay, that's enough, then we're not doing it again. So I would stay below, for this rifle, I'd stay below 68 grains, probably 67 at, at max, maybe 67 and a half. Um, the next powder that we're gonna be testing is Rotumbo. I'm gonna give the rifle plenty of time to cool off before shooting this one, because we probably let it just get pretty hot. Um, it's not stupid hot today, but it's not cool either. So I'm gonna give the steel on the inside of the barrel a minute to cool down. And then when we switch over to Tumbo, we're going to be starting at 62 grains, and we're going to be working up to 68. If I could have my choice as to which of these powders I'm actually going to use, I'm probably going to go with N570 if it shoots good. That's my goal. I like that powder. I actually, I hate metering the powder because the kernels are gigantic, but um, it's, it's a very solid powder. I think that the, it's got good characteristics aside from its metering capabilities um, as far as temp stability and... Uh, consistency it's it's phenomenal i'm gonna shut up now i'm gonna give the gun time to cool off i'm gonna turn off the cameras for a minute we're gonna come back and we're gonna start with 62 grains of rotumbo and we're gonna work up to 68. okay so 64 grains all the way up to 70 grains of ramshot grand gave us a velocity difference starting at 2670 up to about 2975 so we're looking at like a 305 feet per second difference in the 
starting and ending velocity. Now, <clears throat> that being said, again, always look at published load data. Do not load based off of my suggestions here, but I wouldn't do those last three charges because I was getting pressure. I just wouldn't suggest it. Um, if you can tweak your load to not get pressure on those loads, great. But um, with the way these were loaded in this gun, they were definitely looking a little sketch. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. But moving forward, we're going to be using 62 grains of Rotumbo and working up to 68 grains, like I've probably said about three times at this point. But I'm going to start 162, and we're going to go for the top left diamond. I moved my point of impact, so hopefully. These should be on paper, but we're about to find out. Oh, put it right about where I wanted to. Okay, so starting velocity was 25.57, so we're already starting slower than we did with the Grand, Ramshot Grand powder. Moving on to 63 grains. Twenty-five eighty. So we didn't actually even go up that much. Moving on to sixty-four grains. Twenty-five ninety-six. So this powder, we're going up by one grain increments, and they're not seeing a whole lot of difference in the velocity. Uh, which means this one, not going to be a likely contestant for this uh, particular bullet. Twenty-five ninety-six. Ain't very fast compared to what we just saw. Of course, I might jump up here in a second. I don't know, but it seems to be a pretty steady, slow trend of creeping up there. 2662. That one went a little high. Velocity on that one was 2662. Way to make a liar out of me. Next one is going to be 66 grains. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. So far everything looks okay with the Rotumbo, which I would hope so because the speed's not all that impressive anyway. We're second to last here, so we're looking at 67 grains. We might be able to get it over 2800, but without pressure we shall see. 26. That one felt like a heavy bolt lift. So I think I'm beginning to see an injector print on here. So I'd say this is probably a good, again, normally a good stopping point. The velocity on that one was 27.45. I'm going to shoot the last one, but uh, for the, like I said, for the sake of caution, um, just so you know, this would probably be where you should stop. Last one's going to be 68 grains. Same thing just kind of a light ejector print either way I would still stop at the, the previous load um, if it were me so 2819 was that last velocity we did go over 2800 but I would not suggest in this gun loading to 2800 just because you started getting a little bit of pressure sign so same deal um, we're going to let everything cool off for a bit we're gonna move on to H1000 next from 61 grains to 66 grains we're gonna have one less rounds in that uh, in that charge column or whatever, because I I don't really know why that happened. That's just what I wrote down. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and turn off cameras for a minute, and we'll be right back. Okay, next we have H1000, starting with 61 grains. We're gonna be going for the top of the center diamond. 2638 pretty similar to the Rotumbo I'm actually gonna test mag feed in these just to see how they feed because even with a really long bullet these things are still loaded pretty short I mean they're they're not filling up the magazine at all I got a ton of room to load out I would be jamming these things in the lands horrible I don't even know if the bullets would be seated all the way into the case or if they would be seated in the case at all Okay, next is 62 grains. Twenty-six twenty feet per second. We actually went down. The velocity was slower. Twenty-six 
Okay, either I'm missing the target or every single one of those went in the same hole, which is really weird because every one of those was a different powder charge. But that velocity was about 2700. So, so far no pressure signs. That's good. That makes me happy. Well, that last shot makes me think they all went in the same hole because it was not that far away. Uh, 2726. I think we got two left. We're, we should be at 65 grains now. Okay, so we're starting to see that ejector print again. That was 2781. Last group is going to be, or last round is going to be with 66 grains. I'm going to give it a breather here for a second because I shot, a, I kind of shot those in a pretty quick succession. So I'm going to give it just a minute here and then I'll shoot this last round. I'll tell you what, that thing might not be screaming fast. We got another ejector print, nothing too crazy, but nonetheless, it's a pressure sign. 2835 was our velocity. So um, accuracy on the uh, H1000 was for doing a ladder test, not even trying to shoot for accuracy. I just wanted to put them on paper for curiosity's sake, because if you're gonna shoot it, why not? Um, but that, that shot strangely good. Like it's almost like we had two groups, like three in one hole and then three that were almost touching. So that was, that was a little strange, I'm not gonna lie, but as far as um, developing a load for accuracy, I would have to look pretty hard at that for just sheer consistency sake on paper because I think those three went into one hole. Cause I, I mean, there's not enough of dispersion there to make me think that it just went over the target or off the, the sides, but that was just, that doesn't happen very often when you're especially doing a ladder test. So kind of cool. Um, definitely not the speed that I want to be at. I'm hoping N570 will get us there without pressure. Um, I could be completely wrong, in which case that's fine, because these are really heavy bullets, and I'm not trying to be uh, be unreasonable with the cartridge, because I understand that Hornady likes to make claims about their cartridge being able to do stuff that it really can't, and I'm asking a lot out of a 195, but we're going to try it, because we're hand loaders, and that's what we do. So 2835 is what we capped off on that one, which is higher than I expected to be, to be honest, um, but uh, we're going to go ahead, turn off the cameras again. Let it cool off for a little bit. We're going to try to give it the best chance we can with the N570, and then we're going to go ahead and shoot this last uh, row of groups, which is going to be uh, 58 grains up to 64 grains, and then we will be done for the day. Okay, so lastly, we are going to be doing Vitivori N570, which I'm very anxious to try, working from 58 grains up to 64 grains. Um, normally, I do this in the evening, so I don't really have as much time to let the barrel cool off because we run out of daylight, obviously. Today I started in the morning, it's probably about noon now, but we gave this gun plenty of time to cool off. We're back to cold bore at this point, so we're, uh, we're starting on a fresh barrel, essentially. But we're going to begin with 58 grains. We got two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds to fire, and uh, we're going to be going for the top right diamond. Okay, so... The powder I was most anxious to try is the one that uh, is the slowest. <laughs> we're at 2389, so we're not even at 2400 feet per second. This is a uh, powder might be way too slow for this barrel, but we're about to find out. It might uh, might speed up pretty quick here. So starting at 2389, 2421. 
2634. So, I went through those pretty quick because I wasn't nearly as concerned with pressure signs. Um, I'm very, very hesitant to say that with Vitivori, I have seen a lot more um, conservative load data. So, uh, with that being said, always follow published load data. I cannot stress that enough. With that being said, I feel like there's been a lot more times where Hodgdon or some of these other companies, I'm not necessarily just trying to direct this at Hodgdon even though they own like 80% of them now, but they uh, they will publish loads that legitimately you, you get to that point and you're, you're, you know, you're at max. Like the, the pressure is noticeable and uh, you will see pressure signs that to me usually is a good place to stop or before that point rather. With Vitivori, a lot of times I'll work up to max and I, I still don't even see hints of pressure, which is right now. We're at 2634, which is where we started with Rotumbo and H1000. Um, I don't remember where the Grand started, but the point is we ended where we started with the other powders. And I believe we could probably put quite a bit more powder in the case um, and get a lot more speed out of it before we actually hit pressure. I could be wrong. I could put one more grain in here and all of a sudden we're blowing primers. That, that's happened before, so it's, it's not... Um, completely outside of the wheelhouse of, of possibility. But, point being, um, I think the max charge for this is, is a little, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they undershot it. And also, a lot of times when you look at that data and you see huge variations in the max charge from, like say, Vitivori versus a hydrogen manual, you uh, look at the bullet length or the overall length of the loaded cartridge and they're dramatically different. So. That could have a big factor in this and the amount of um, free bore that we've got with the bullet that we have chosen and whatnot. But we may revisit this. We may shoot uh, more N570 and uh, just see how much powder we can fit in the case. Because like I said, we, we really uh, undershot the, the, the goal here as far as speed goes with that one powder. And only that one powder. But the rest of the data came from Hodgson. So that might be why. So anyway, as far as uh, this test goes, the H1000 held the tightest spread as far as like accuracy on target, but we're not really looking at that. Like I said, I wanted to put these on target, but I'm not really looking at the group sizes. It was just kind of a reference point to get them an idea of what this gun is going to be doing at roughly 100 yards with different powders. But the, the goal today was to look at the speed, and we got a pretty good idea of what kind of speeds we can get with these four powders. In 570, we still need to obviously play around with a little bit more. But um, so far, I'm really excited about the gun. It seems like it's got the capability to, to shoot well. We just need to start playing with some actual load development, but I'm gonna get the barrel broken in as far as probably putting at least 100 rounds through it before we ever actually try to figure out a, a hunting load that we can settle on. Right now, I'm just kind of getting data on the cartridge and trying to get you guys a little bit of information that you can visually see so that we're all kind of starting to get a better feel for what this cartridge is capable of with certain components and whatnot. So anyway, that's enough of me rattling. Today we're going to be continuing our pressure testing with the 7mm PRC. I'm going to try to make this a continuation of the last video. If I forget, I apologize. Um, all the details will be in the description regardless. Um, not planning on going over them again right now because this should be at the beginning of the video technically, but if I screw that up then my bad. But anyway, details on all the equipment and everything are going to be in the description. but. For this part of the test, we're going to be doing, it's a 195 grain Burger EOL bullet in Peterson brass with federal gold metal large rifle magnum primers and the powder is what we are going to be changing. So we're going to be working with 4831 shortcut by Hodgdon, uh, Stayball HD by Winchester and Ramshot LRT or long range tactical. So the first one we're going to be doing is the Hodgdon 4831 shortcut. I'm only gonna have four shots of each of these because I only had that much brass left <laughs> and we started pretty low on the last test. So we're going to basically start middle of the road and work up to max per Hodgdon's max charges on their website. So starting at 57 grains of 4831 shortcut, we're gonna be going from 57 to 60. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mag feed these. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these on that top left diamond on the target. Again, we're not shooting for groups here. We're just putting them on paper, but we're trying to get speeds off this. Twenty-five, thirty-five. That's pretty slow, actually. 
Next is 58 grains. Twenty-five forty-six. Not much of a change there. Fifty-nine grains. Twenty-five eighty-six. These are pretty slow. And Twenty-six thirty-six. So that one's out the window because I didn't get any pressure. So I guess we could go past that point, but I don't really want to keep going up. If we're not even close to where we want to be and <laughs> we're, we're already at the published max charge but we could go higher because i didn't i didn't see any indication of pressure on those okay next is stable hd the winchester powder from 66 grains up to 69 grains we're gonna go for the top of the center diamond 2736 2747, 2771, starting to feel some heavy bolt lift and I got an ejector mark on there so I would call that quits if uh, I were recommending what you guys were to load. In this rifle I wouldn't, I wouldn't go over that. We're going to go ahead and shoot the next one but as far as just like I said being safe that's where I would call it max. 27, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Velocity was definitely a lot higher. I'm gonna give the gun a little bit to cool off before we shoot this last group, but I think that's the highest velocity that we've gotten aside from Ramshot Grand, which I'm curious to see what that LRT can do. Supposedly the Ramshot Grand is gonna give us more velocity than the LRT will, but we're about to find out. So the next thing that we're gonna be shooting is that LRT, and it's gonna be 72 grains up to 75 grains in one grain increments. All right, last up we have the Ramshot LRT from 72 grains up to 75 grains. One grain increments. Aiming for the top right diamond. 27, 26. 28, 24. I've already got pressure. We're gonna keep going, but I'm I'm gonna be a little cautious about shooting this fourth round. 28. That one actually felt fine. It's kind of weird. I'm getting a lot of these where I'll get pressure on one and then the next doesn't even give me a hint of pressure. It's just weird. 2867. We're gonna go ahead and shoot this fourth one. 29. 02. So we've managed to get this thing up to 2,900 feet per second, but I wouldn't say that I would recommend it. <laughs> um, it's definitely doable, but if I'm getting pressure signs on the, the second out of four there, I I don't think I would recommend shooting 75 grains if 73 gave me pressure, even though it was once. Um, that last one didn't even really indicate pressure either so I guess there's a hint of an ejector mark but it's not super pronounced like that second one was so I don't know but either way um, the first sign you feel pressure just you probably should just leave it at that and back off um, 2902 is our final velocity that's all the pressure testing I think I'm gonna do with the 195 grain burger I'm planning on trying the 175 grain elite hunter I'm okay with a little bit slower of a velocity, but the 175 still deserves some attention, I think. So do me a favor, whatever you guys want to see out of this, um, leave a comment, shoot me a message or whatever. Just give me an idea of what you want to see out of this gun. I'm probably not going to do everything because this is legitimately going to probably be something that I develop a load for and then keep shooting that load for 
a hunting round, but um, if it's something that uh, a lot of people want to see, I'll probably put it on the channel. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Stay risen.